Mm-hmm. Right? I like the underscore you make, by the way, because that's the point Hal makes also. Mm-hmm. The country has become mm-hmm. a lavender. No, the, be, exactly. Because the country, of some of the problems you're talking because about. Because of those you. problems mm-hmm. and those problems going unchecked and those problems, you know, spreading to other communities. Mm-hmm. The passage that you read to me last night hit home so hard mm-hmm. because it pointed to how other communities, other areas in this country have started to develop all of the symptoms that we decry mm-hmm. in uh, with Laventy. Because, I mean, I don't see Laventy as a negative space. I've got far too many lovely people Thank coming you. out of that space mm-hmm. to think of it as, as negative. And I know the history of, of the, how the hill sprang up, right? So I have a lot of love and appreciation mm-hmm. for the hill and its contributions to the country. But we need to look at these symptoms and the way in which these symptoms are sp- have have started to spread to other communities. Because you have the Malabars, you have the Lahaketas, you have the enterprise, you have the embarkadeers, you have co- communities all over the country mm-hmm. that are experiencing these symptoms, manifesting these symptoms. How are we going to tackle that? We are talking uh, to nine minutes away from 11 o'clock. That voice you just heard is that of Rhoda Barad. She's a lecturer and a former, uh, when she's a lecturer and a teacher now. Uh, um, so we have her in that capacity. And when she said, I spoke to her last night, um, I was looking, I just got a confirmation from Mr. Graves, who is my other guest here this morning. He's a community activist. And I was looking Looking at something he said, he spoke, you know, I looked at Project Reason, and which he's a part of, and I said, oh, good, let me uh, go in that direction with him. But in speaking with him, I'm looking at his work, and the work says as follows, gang leaders have their funerals already planned. I mean, the, this is the mindset of the, of, of the kids. They're going to emulate these people because of the following. It says that gang leaders live on the countdown to their death. Quality of life makes no sense to them. The way you are socialized, the arguments you may make, do not resonate with them. The only thing that matters to them is their children, and there are many gang leaders who have no children, so there is no way you can have a discussion with them. That is a frightening place to be, and an app analysis, Hal, how do you reach them then? You have to win their trust. Um, we, people have to work in the community helping the children and the elderly, and the community will look at you um, they will look to see if you're genuine. Too many people have come into love until I make, made, made so many promises. I'll get you jobs. I'll get, I make no promises. I just do. I just do what I can. And so over the years, people have built up a trust with me. And I don't run away when the gunfire co- comes. I've been there. I've been shot at. I've been threatened. But what's interesting People don't have to all face that. Because of the work that some people have been doing, the, the gate is open, and then you can come with us. There's now a unit in the Police the Hearts and Minds Unit. You can come with the Hearts and Minds Unit. Mm-hmm. They have programs. They are working with the guys in St. Babs. They are working with guys in St. Paul Street. They just brought 70 doctors in in December, and the doctors returned just last week. So they have health clinics. They're quietly working on the ground. It's unfortunate that all that gets into the media is the police patrols and the hard policing. Mm. But there are a lot of programs going down. We have centers put down on the Beatum, Basilon Street, Sealots, where we've put computers in. And we're working to start classes. We're beginning to start moving the boys into entrepreneurial adventures. We're talking about selling doubles. They have started, they've gone to classes, and they've started tilapia farming. They've just gotten permission from a resident to lease a property in East Port of Spain, and they're expanding their tilapia farming. Mm -hmm. That kind of news is not reaching out. The boys who started a pig farm and now want to go into melangen farming, Mm. there are areas where they're moving they need more support we need more re-educating they need more encouraging um and and, and it needs to spread because the guys in maloney will call them and ask what you're up to mm-hmm. by you is quiet mm-hmm. we're into tilapia how do i get into tilapia yes. the guys in malabar will call and ask the guys in Embakade will ask we have to spread goodness but spreading the good is difficult. Well, it is the role, it is the role of the media to cold, do that. You can't catch health. 
I think I think it's the role of the media to to to, to have more conversations like these, so folks don't walk away and thinking that this is an environment of criminality and there's nothing else to discuss from it. Speak to me about the classrooms, uh, Rhoda. Uh, you've been in the classrooms. Outside of the problem that uh, Hal articulated with fathers, the problem with mothers trying to make ends meet, what sort of outreach you saw while in the schools in the school system? But these young minds, I mean, you, you know, folks are telling me about kids walking around 13, 14 with guns, and I go, huh? Uh, I mean, t t t talk to me. What, what, what kind of outreach is there going on in the schoolroom? Well, I'm okay. I'm I, the school that I taught at, uh, Arima North Secondary. Mm -hmm. We didn't have students walking around with guns. Possibly knives sometimes, and 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 maybe a couple other contraband items, but not anything as extreme as guns. Mm. What I will say is this: students mm. spend at minimum six hours a day at these school compounds. Mm -hmm. So you need to have you ha you need to understand that the school is essentially uh, another home, and for some of them, the primary home actually, because they they the the home that they go to, they might only be spending a couple hours at that home so you want to generate an atmosphere of nurturing and empowerment in the homes i i my jury is out on our on our syllabus mm. the, 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 the syllabi across the board and whether or not it is actually promoting one empowerment and two critical thinking mm. and uh, what what many of these students require are life skills that allow them to get out into their regular space and be able to assert themselves and articulate their needs. When students cannot articulate the things that they need or the things that they want, that frustration builds. Mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. you have a lot of hurt children who are unable to articulate their pain. Right or to articulate the things that they want. Yes. Um, now there are there are improvements. You have m a more counselling taking place at schools now. You have. Um, I also think there's there's been not. I think I know that there's been uh, some revamping in terms of things like how we deal with discipline and, and punishment at schools. But it needs to happen. I think uh, faster. I also think that there's there's certainly a lot more training that teachers need to have, not just in terms of delivering curriculum in the classroom, you know. A lot of teachers don't understand how exactly to deal with or cope with students that are coming from communities where there's a lot of tension and strife. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to mm -hmm. cope with that. Mm -hmm. That voice you're hearing is that of University of the West Indies. Uh, lecturer um, Rhoda Barat is with us. Uh, we uh, also have with us Hal Graves, who's a community activist, and he's attached as a consultant with the Ministry of National Security. Hal, get into this area for me of the parents. You mentioned, uh, uh, um, you articulated very nicely, the uh, very realistically, what fathers and mothers go, go through. Project Reason, is there any work being done with the parents? Because most of these parents just left childhood themselves. Themselves. So we are, our outreach workers are working with parents, parents initially of at-risk um, youth, and parents who have lost either a husband or son um, to the violence. Mm -hmm. The frightening part is the numbers. Yes. It's in the thousands, the numbers of victims that have been left behind. Mm -hmm. the, the size of the, 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 the problem is so great. Project Reason only has 12 people on the ground. The Hearts and Minds team, there are about 20 officers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The size of the help we need, and all those hurt children going to school who need help, the Ministry of Education has up to their game. Um, the counselors have already gone into the Southern Slavantin School. Um, but the levels of trauma they met there, but I'm glad they've, they've gone in. They've been constantly running programs. But the children, while we need to meet them during the six hours they are in school, we also need to move and roll these programs into the community. Mm -hmm. Now, I There's think. A start, but it's not enough yet. Now, I think the early childhood care centers that we've established over the last um, five to ten years, because there has been a thrust in the last ten years or so to in, in, increase the number of. Uh, ECC centers. I think those centers can be used and utilized um, after hours and on weekends to get parents on board with parenting programs mm. and anger management programs and conflict management programs because those are the areas that I'm seeing need, need attention. Uh, it's interesting that Rhoda says that 
because I know the Hearts and Minds program has already started working with the preschools. Great. Um, and, and doing simple things. To break the borderlines, we're taking the children and we're carrying them to activities across the border. We have a massive Christmas party and we bring them and we bring their parents together in a Lavantil community. But you have to ride on the bus with people from another community. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've seen the preschool children mm -hmm. playing without incident with each other with no he is from this side and he, she is from this side. And this year, for this last year, for the first time, we had some of the fathers visiting the Christmas party and seeing that there can be life outside of borders. Leaving the... So that mm -hmm. We are working, starting with the preschool children, we are working at the homework centers. We had an incident where one of the homework centers that was working with us came under attack from a gang leader. Mm -hmm. And they had to ask him, why are you taking over the homework center? Mm -hmm. Your child comes here. Can you teach your child... Can you help your child with the homework? And he said, no. So what are you going to do when you take hmm. over? And he couldn't answer. But he has gotten into a mindset that everything in his community, he has to be the boss of it. Hmm. He has a hmm. gun, so he should be in charge. And, and the community has to be able to speak to the, the, their sons and say, hello, you're out of place. We did some maps and English classes in one community. And we put the community in charge of the class. Mm -hmm. So they had to sit down. The teacher is there. But a mother from the community is sitting at the back of the class. And she's the one who says, hand me that phone. You can't be on this phone when the teacher is talking. Yes, you right. can't come into the classroom with your pants down. And that community, they learned not just maths and English, but they learned to listen to their elders once more. It's that all about it. Out the gun, listen to her and today that community we don't have shootings in that community anymore and the boys who were in the gang when they want to do something they go to the older people and ask them how to do it so we have to re-engineer our community yes. we have to work with them to develop new kinds of community leadership to show them that there's value in growing old there's value in the people in the community who have been educated and that you have to work with those people. And it's a process. It's a process. It's an incremental movement is what we're talking about. Hal, I do want to ask you in conclusion, and in congratulating you for the work that you do, I do want to ask you in conclusion, those who are desirous of assisting going through your project, Reason, or whichever uh, other bodies available, how can they go about doing that uh, via a website or a telephone number or anything like that for those who are willing to get involved? Because mentoring is going to be a major part in doing a all of this. A very major part, and we welcome that. How can they um, get in touch? They can get me on my Facebook page, mm -hmm. Roy Space Gloria. The Project Reason um, Facebook page is a working project, but, but um, they can also leave messages there. And they could also contact the Hearts and Minds Unit of the San Diego Police Service. Mm -hmm. um, they can contact them through any police station, send the information there. They will get it on to the house and mind unit, to Inspector Subaru and Inspector Reed. Um, and it's a collaborative effort. We have mm. Citizen Security Program on board. We have other agencies, but we do need mentors. You're very right. Mm. Because when they see people coming forward, then they know that there are people who care and they understand that the gun is not the solution. Right, right now, they don't mediate. They don't. They think they have conflict management covered. They think that an nine millimeter round or 5.56 or 7.62 round mm -hmm. is the only conflict mediator they need. Because when they get into conflict, they conflict they, who are they are in conflict with? 
dies and the conflict is over. Mm. They don't believe in talking. Now we've got to find ways to, to keep them doing that all the time. Again, congratulations on the work that you have done and continue to do. Hal Graves leaving the, the stage and going into the stage of life and uh, working uh, in the community, working with Project Reason, working with his own initiative, also a consultant to the Ministry of National Security. Hal, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning.